I recently asked for questions that you'd like me to answer or things that are a bit challenging that you'd like me to review. And I got two responses. One is, how do you add libraries to a project? And the other is, how do you tell the camera to save an image in a location? So we'll take a look at the two of those. First of all, uh, let's start with adding a library. We see active PT. Oops, sorry, we see active PT is a project that has an error because it has an exclamation. So if I go to build path, configure build path, uh, what we're going to see is that one of the libraries here is incorrect. We see that this is something that was um, committed to GitHub with a library that where the library path was specific to this user's computer. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to click the library that is not correct, which is Android Support v4 jar, choose Remove, and now I'm going to choose Add External Jars. Many times this is how you would add a library. Uh, if we look, I've done this recently, so it has the full path to the correct location for my computer. Uh, C, C Programs Android, Android SDK, Extras Android, Compatibility v4, and here's the jar and then I choose open. So if I want to add an external library, uh, then I'll choose OK. If I want to add an external library, many times what I'll do is right click on a project, choose build path, choose configure build path, and then choose libraries. Also, for anything that requires the Google Play services, that's a little bit, uh, that's a slightly different approach. What we're going to do there, and this is per Google's recommendation, is we're going to say new and then we'll say project and then we'll say Android project from existing code then we're going to choose browse now the trick is that we need to find uh, let's see for me it's under C I believe C programs and then Android Android SDK extras so we have to navigate around a little bit Google uh, Google Play services so we have to find our Android SDK location, and then my Android SDK location is C Programs Android Android SDK. From there, we go to Extras, and then Google, and then Google Play Services, and then we would choose OK. Now, I'm going to cancel out of this because I've already done this, so it wouldn't make sense to import the project twice. But that's how we use the Google Play Services. Once we do that, we get this guy. We get this project. And then we can use the Google Play services for things like Maps. What's also important is that if you're using the Google Play services, you have to make sure that you're, uh, you have to make sure you have an AVD that's set up for the Google APIs. That means it already has the Google Play services installed on it. So that's for the Google Play services library. It's a little different than we would normally do. We have to take a few extra steps to actually create a project. Uh, and you just have to create the project and have it in the same workspace as the project you're working on. Then when you create an AVD, you have to make sure uh, you have to make sure that the device includes Google APIs. Up until recently there was a limitation where if you had Google APIs, you couldn't use the uh, Intel Atom the Intel Atom uh, CPU, which was a shame because that CPU on an emulator is very fast compared to a traditional emulator. It also tends to have better success with the camera. So uh, the good news is as of API level 19, that's no longer a limitation. You just have to make sure uh, that you've installed the proper packages in the, uh, in the SDK manager for both the uh, Intel Atom uh, and also for the Google APIs. And also you have to actually install the Intel Atom software. I have a different video that goes over that, uh, so I won't go over that here. Just look, uh, search my YouTube channel for the Intel HAXM uh, processor. Okay, now I mentioned that you have to find your AVD location. If you don't know your AVD location, simply go to Window Preferences and then Android. And it's this thing right up top here, the SDK, I'm sorry, the SDK location. So it's this right here, the SDK location. Okay, so that's question number one. Question number two was, how do you tell the camera to save an image? This drove me absolutely nuts for the longest time. 
when I started programming. If we take a look, for instance, at uh, our existing GPS appliant activity, and I'm going to, uh, do we actually take a picture in this? I believe we do. I'm going to control M. Okay. On activity result, camera result. Yes. If we take a look, uh, what we're doing is we are getting data out of the camera results. So we take a picture, and then what we do is we get a thumbnail of that as a bitmap. Now the question is, how do we save that? Well, we can save it. We can save it, but it doesn't quite work this way. Uh, if we want to save it, what we will do is we have to tell the camera when it's invoked. We have to tell it where to save the image. So that's the important point. Uh, we have to tell the camera when it is invoked where to save the image. So it's not after we take the picture that we save the image, it's before we even invoke the camera. Uh, what I'm going to do here is, first of all, we want to save the images in a standard location. So uh, we can get that standard location by using environment, and then we say get external storage public directory and then we say environment and then we'll say directory pictures what this will do is this is a way that we can refer to the directory the public directory where the Android device will store the images without actually specifying a full path trust me you don't want to specify a full path you want to use a more flexible approach like this because you don't know if the user has you know something special set up or an SD card installed this is a much safer approach okay now we're not done just yet I'm gonna put a semicolon here and I'm going to control one and I'm gonna say assign to assign statement to new local variable okay uh, this will give us a directory okay but we still have to give the picture a name as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file uh, picture file equals a new file and we're going to say directory and then we need to give the picture a name I'll just call it pic.jpg you probably don't want to hard code a name like that because every time the user saves a picture it's going to save with the same file name it's going to save on top of the previous picture so you want to probably put a timestamp in there uh, you know, do some kind of timestamp, something that makes makes it unique. But in any case, uh, this will work for us right now. Okay. Uh, now uh, we have one more step. We need to say URI dot from file and pass it our picture file. Okay. And I'm going to control one, assign to new local variable, and we'll say uh, we'll say picture URI. Okay. Now we're almost ready. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say camera intent. Okay, and then I'm going to say put extra. Remember what an extra is. It's some information that we can pass along uh, to an implicit intent or really any intent. Uh, what I'm going to say is Android dot uh, provider. Whoops, sorry. dot media store dot extra output comma and then we're gonna say picture URI okay and what we're doing here let me put a comment to this effect we are telling the camera intent that we wish to save the image okay so we're gonna say uh, up here we'll put a comment that says make a directory where we wish to save our image okay that's good and then we're gonna save now I've loaded the application in the debugger and I've clicked on the button to take a picture and let's walk through and watch what happens uh, let me control M so we can watch this in high def okay I'm gonna say F6 F6, F6. Okay, and what is this picture file anyway? MNT SD card pictures, pick JPG. MNT SD card pictures, pick JPG. 
Uh, okay, and I will warn you, sometimes this works well, sometimes it does not. Let me go to DDMS view for just a moment. I'm going to go to File Explorer. Okay. Uh, MNT SD card pictures. And do we have a PicJPG under this directory? MNT SD card pictures. As if now there's nothing under that directory. Let's go back to Java view and let's keep working. Uh, so I'm going to choose F6. Let me, uh, yeah, let me control M so we can watch this in high def. Okay, I'm going to choose F6. Well, actually, I should go to debug, shouldn't I? Okay. Okay, now we'll choose step over. Step over. And when I hit play, what we're going to see is our screen is going to bring up the camera emulator. So I choose play. And with any luck. Okay, camera emulator is coming up. It's a kind of ugly emulator. Uh, let me scroll down just a bit. Okay, I'm going to click and I'm going to check. And that will take us back eventually to our, um, that will take us back to our original application. And now, uh, if I go to DDMS, let's take a look. Let's go to that same path where we just were, MNT SD card, pictures. What do we have under here? We have pic.jpg. I can choose the pull it off option, uh, pick JPG, I can save this, uh, that's fine, we'll save it under under my directory, let me just copy it, well shoot, it won't give me a full, okay, uh, let me, I'll just save it onto my desktop, how about that, so we'll save, okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, Windows Explorer, okay, one moment, and I'm going to go to my desktop, Okay, and we're going to look for pick JPG. Okay, here we go. And what do we see? It is it is that camera emulator image we were seeing. Now there is one warning. There is one major warning, and if you happen to notice something closely there, uh, you'll see that I actually had an error uh, once I continued. The, the, the image did save okay, but I had an error. Here's the deal. You can either send in a directory like this. You can either send in a directory like this, or in the on activity result, you can get a thumbnail back as we've been doing. Okay. However, you can't do both. You can't do both. If you tell it to save the image to a file, uh, you can't also get a thumbnail back in the on activity result. So what we have to do here then is comment this out and maybe just raise a toast. Toast.make text. Okay, uh, this comma, and then we'll say image saved, and then duration we'll say toast dot uh, length long, and then show. So that is the caveat there. If you save it, you no longer get that uh, little thumbnail that comes back. So. Uh, okay, so what do we need to do for a picture? First of all, in the on activity result, we're just going to put the toast.make text. Secondly, when we are invoking the picture, or when we're invoking the camera rather, as an intent, uh, we're going to invoke the camera intent as we have before. That is, we're going to use an implicit intent, and we're going to set the action to android.provider.mediastore.android uh, action image capture. That's what we've done before. The new thing is we're going to find the public directory where images are stored by using environment.get-external-storage-public-directory, environment.directory-pictures. Next, we're going to use that directory and a picture name. And again, we probably want to increment this name or make it unique somehow. So if we take multiple pictures, uh, the pictures will each have unique names. So directory, the public directory, and our, then we uh, come up with the picture name we assemble that together with the public directory and a new file object. We take that file object, convert it to a URI. We take the URI, we pass it into our camera intent by using this Android provider method store, media store dot extra output and then the URI. And then finally we go ahead and start the camera. So those are the steps we need to do if we want to save an image to a place on disk. We need to know the image name in advance. That's important. 
Now we could very easily move this image at a later date. You know, we could copy and paste it somewhere. That's fine. But if you want the camera intent to store an image somewhere, you have to give it that image name in advance by using an extra. And these are the tools that we can use to determine where that image should go. Uh, you know, and again, we want to use the get external storage public directory and environment dot, uh, directory pictures we want to use that instead of trying to assemble a path ourselves because we might not know what permissions the user has it can get really messy this is a much higher quality way uh, to store an image so two different things we covered number one libraries number two how to store an image from the camera i hope you enjoyed it as always please uh, let me know what comments or questions you have um, I won't commit this right away to GitHub because I have a couple other things going on here. But if you do want the source code, just email me uh, and I'll be happy to give you the source code. Thank you.